Hello my friends and welcome to another uh, Commands and Colors uh, game play through and uh, this time we will uh, look at a scenario called Brindisi Raid uh, in 48 BC. Uh, so obviously we are con continuing with our uh, civil war, the Caesar civil war and um, or the civil war between Caesar and Pompeius and um, well, we have seen, if you follow the, this channel and the latest battles we have played, we have seen actions in, uh, in Spain, uh, Hispania, uh, we had the Battle of Ilerda there, if you remember. We also seen uh, how Curio went over to Africa, uh, fighting there um, about the control of uh, Africa. That didn't go too well, I mean in history. Uh, my scenario uh, endings were a bit <laughs> different than in history, but um, uh, in history uh, the Pompeians remained in control over there, much thanks to the Numidians. Uh, but in Hispania, where uh, Julius Caesar himself were uh, campaigning, um, they uh, fared much better, so uh, they now have control over Hispania more or less. And uh, after that, uh, Caesar went back to Italy uh, to make plans for, you know, encountering Pompeius himself. Uh, and also, as he said here in the historical background of the scenario, uh, Caesar he did a uh, very risky January crossing across the Adriatic over to um, over to Greece, or I'm not really sure where he landed to be honest, but um, could have been Epirus, or otherwise it was Pompeius who's, I mean, uh, Brindisi or Brindisium as it were, uh, was actually also the, the place where Pompeius was, um, um, I mean, in the beginning of the civil war when, when Caesar came to Italy and expelled uh, Pompeius from Italy, he um, sailed out from Brindisium and maybe he was the guy who went to Epirus uh, from here, but well, that's not uh, really important for, for this uh, anyway. But the thing is, um, Caesar did cross the Adriatic over to, um, well, uh, Greece or Balkans, I think. I'm not really sure where he went ashore because we have the Battle of Dyrrhachium and all that coming later on, and that's pretty much uh, up north, right? So, um, well, um, I can't really say, to be honest. Anyway, uh, he went over with, um, I think it was seven legions, not uh, legions of full strength, though. Um, they were, uh, yeah, they, they were pretty much... Um, uh, the depleted legions, you could say. But seven legions, uh, he, went, he went over with uh, personally as the first wave of uh, invasion force against uh, Pompeius there. Now, um, over back in Italy, we have the uh, Marcus Antonius or Mark Anthony. Uh, he was uh, supposed to get over with a, with a second wave, uh, bringing with him additional five legions. Now, of course, this was a risky thing, perhaps. I mean, Caesar was there with a half of the force and Mark, uh, Marcus Antonius with a, a um, second part over in Italy. But Pompeius really didn't dare to attack Caesar anyway over there because um, he had the numbers on his side, but the quality, not so much. Uh, Caesar went with him, uh, brought with him the real veteran legions there, so uh, Pompeius didn't dare to attack. He wanted to train his troops more before he he dared to offer a battle uh, against Caesar. I think Caesar actually also uh, offered battle, but uh, Pompeius uh, did um, refuse that. Anyway, um, the problem was though for uh, Marcus Antonius that um, it was I mean, it was still um, during the winter time, right? So it was 
bad weather and also the Pompeians had pretty good fleet patrolling the Adriatic so uh, he couldn't uh, get over his forces he had to wait uh, and Pompeius was making plans also he didn't, he didn't just uh, sit and wait because he knew if the forces were gathered together uh, I mean uh, uh, Caesar's legions and Anthony's uh, uh, legions then uh, they would easily crush him so he had to do something uh, about the situation so he made up a real daring and cunning plan uh, so he sent his admiral uh, Libo who we'll see in this battle as the uh, Pompeian commander uh, he commanded a large force of marines as it says here and 50 warships so he went over to Brindisium uh, where it was supposed that Marcus Antonius would be shipping out his troops uh, to join Caesar um, so he, he thought if he could raid that port destroying the transport ships uh, Caesar would be on his own and then Pompeius would have time to train his troops and with the time uh, and maybe also raise new troops and on the right time strike against Caesar that was uh, the main plan for him there so so it said here uh, uh, Libo landed his uh, marines outside of Brindisium uh, and the Caesarians were taken by surprise here so they managed to you know go over to the port the, the I mean the man the ramparts here pretty soon this is not a large town Brindisium it's a uh, so I guess the the walls were not really that you know overwhelming so they pretty hastily took control of those went to the uh, port and start destroying some ships and managed with that but Antonius and also Fufius was here, they pretty hastily uh, formed the truth because they were camping not too far away. I mean, in, in this map, it's behind this ridge here. They have this, their camp. Uh, I mean, they, they are, of course, being camping nearby because they were waiting for a suitable time to ship out uh, from Brindisium. Now, uh, so he gathered his troops, started force marching them. Uh, towards the town and when actually uh, came there in time you could say before Libo had successfully destroyed uh, too many of the of the transport uh, ships over in in the port uh, so yeah as it says here Libo's marines were defeated by Antony's legions before they could destroy enough shipping uh, to truly delay Anthony's army from crossing. So uh, that was a catastrophe for Pompey because he had sent also very many of his veterans and reliable troops over there, uh, you know, trying to assure that uh, this transport fleet was destroyed. So now he lost a good commander and a good uh, part of his. Uh, uh, veteran allegiances. I'm not sure about Libo's fate though. Maybe he got away. Um, I cannot say Maybe anybody you of you know uh, But this of course opened up for uh, You know for Caesar to gain the upper hand because in a while Marcus Antonius will be uh, able to ship over his troops and uh, join with Caesar and of course, then we will see uh, Diracium, the Battle of Diracium, and uh, well, also, of course, Pharsalus, the, the big battle uh, that we will see there. Uh, and those are featured here as, the, as scenarios, so I'm really looking forward to play those, to be honest. But uh, let's get this uh, raid uh, done first and see if Libo is more um, successful in our uh, version of the. Of history if you could say so what's uh, in the war council then well we have the Pompeian army led by Libo they have five command cards and these guys would move first Caesarian army is led by Anthony 
and they will start with two cards, uh, but they will eventually get a hand of five. Uh, it's due to the surprise attack that they're down, so they are not really ready for the battle uh, as the game starts. There is a special rule about this uh, in the um, um, solo system. Um, I'll come to that in a moment. It's not a complex one, but I'll wait with that when we when we look at the cards. Uh, but we have also other special rules. Uh, oh, by the way, we have uh, a six uh, banner victory uh, limit here in this uh, scenario. Uh, so the special rules then. Uh, yeah, this is about the cards, so I'm gonna, not going to read that. Or maybe we can take it uh, right away then. Uh, so there is a card difference of three. Uh, so the Pompeians will have three more cards than the Caesarian in the beginning. So that's why I have dealt, you know, extra cards in a slot A, B, and D. Um, now, normally, if you have a, you know, this card um, advantage, you will always have these extra cards in your slots uh, for the, throughout the game. But as Caesarians will gain more and more card, and the thing is, both sides would have five cards in a normal play eventually. Uh, uh, the special rule tells us that. As soon as you play a card from any of these two card slots, uh, you will not uh, gain another one, uh, I mean a second card in this slot. You will only, always only have one card from that time on um, for the rest of the game. I hope that uh, made sense. But uh, yeah, in short, these extra cards in these slots are one time only. As soon as you play one of those, they will never have two cards again. So that's the first uh, special rule. Uh, the second one is Julian Legion's rule are in effect for both armies. You remember that, I believe, if you have seen my previous um, playthroughs. Um, mediums and heavies can go too, and they have the Pila uh, ability. Uh, the town of Brindisi, or Brindisium as it were, uh, is protected by ramparts. Even though Brindisi is uh, on the Pompeian side of the battlefield, the units occupying the ramparts at the start of the battle are Caesarian units and they must retreat towards the Caesarian map edge. So, so these uh, four units uh, manning the walls need to retreat in that direction. Also, uh, of course, um, any evades done will be in that direction. Um, then we have this rule. Place a spare block in each seacoast hex uh, behind the uh, Brindisi uh, rampage to represent Roman transport ships uh, in the hex. When a Pompeian unit occupies a seacoast hex in Brindisi at the start of the Pompeian player's turn, uh, the player gains one victory banner that cannot be lost. Remove the spare block from the hex uh, before playing the command card. Uh, we have the same thing over in uh, behind the Pompeians. Uh, so they have it's the same rule. So I have not spare blocks. I have uh, placed the elephants there. It's not elephants taken out for a swim, but these are representing uh, Pom the Pompeian fleet, and this is uh, the Caesarian uh, transport fleet. So uh, as soon as uh, an enemy unit enters the hex and remains there to the start of the next turn. Uh, remove that and they get the victory banner for a destroyed ship. So both sides have some ships to try to destroy and also to control uh, and protect. Uh, then we have the last special rule here. Treat all uh, seacoast terrain as affordable river terrain hexes for purposes of movement and combat. Of course, these uh, hexes need to be uh, accessible for uh, land the troops, so um, yeah, they are. Uh, sh I mean, shallow waters, so it's it's like affordable river, meaning you need to stop there, and you have some restrictions to in combat. I think it's two dice in and out, and if you do range combat, it's only one die out. So that's basically it. Um, let me put that away and push this a bit. Or draw it to, to, towards me a bit, something like that. I think it's good. And let's uh, review the troops. So let's 
check the raiding uh, party first uh, under Libo. So we have a front line with a bit of a lighter troops uh, getting in into land first here or landing first. As so we have four auxilia, we have one bow unit, and then we actually have one medium heavy also there with Libo himself in the. So you see among the first ones to get ashore there. Then we have the heavier troops coming ashore um, at the back here. So it's five of the medium heavies there. So in total, it's six medium heavies uh, with the Libos uh, legionary unit also there. So um, yeah, this represents the big marine core that the Libo went with uh, to raid the city or the town. And that's all. So it's not a big force. Uh, but they are really close to uh, Brindisium, so yeah, they could they could do some damage before these guys come to the rescue, that's for sure. So let's look at the Caesarean. So if we start with the town itself, so we have uh, three lights manning the um, walls, and we also have one uh, auxilia there, that's all. So there's gaps in the lines as well. You know, these hexes do not uh, prevent any movement, so uh, but the Popeyas can, could pour through here uh, pretty easily. So this is going to be uh, a tough one uh, for the Caesareans, that's for sure, If I mean, if these guys get the right cards for it. Then we have uh, Pompeius and Fufius' uh, army. So we have three legionaries and then uh, Marcus Antonius and over here we have Fufius also with three and then we have two here uh, Manning the camps. We have four camp hexes here uh, Note these are not any victory points for the Pompeians. They are not interested in raiding these um, You know camp hexes here. They just want to get to the city and destroy it and probably if History has had played out differently. They would do that quickly and then back to the ships and sail away but uh, these guys uh, came to intercept that in, in history and let's see if we can do that as well. We're not going to forget that we have two more uh, units here. We have two medium heavy uh, cavalry as well on the Caesarian side, um, which could play a pretty interesting role, I believe. Uh, let's see about that. So speaking of that, let's do some tactics. So if we start again with the raiding party, then um, well, we have two things to think about. We want a force to raid the city or the town, and we want I want someone here to defend our ships to not give the victory banners for free to the uh, Caesarian side. So I'm not sure how I'm gonna divide the troops, but maybe maybe half of the troops could go towards that, and half of the troops uh, left here protecting. I believe. Maybe a bit bigger part would, would march towards the town, actually. Um, and we can just... I mean, these guys will just want... They would just want to buy time, more or less, uh, for these guys to do their job and win the scenario before they got uh, um, destroyed and uh, Caesareans eventually reaching the, 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 the ships here. So I might even go forward with these guys just to, you know, slowly retreat and 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 buy time. So that's the main plan. We'll see how that plays out. Um, but yeah, one more word about that. Remember, these guys can go two hexes, but they cannot, of course, battle them. So if these guys can get activated, they might rush the ramparts at turn one, you know. Uh, even though they cannot battle, I think it's a good place to be here. We could go there next turn and start destroying, or we can attack here and blocking these guys from retreating or evading. So there's a lot of possibilities. I want to get them quick here. Here then, uh, same thing. We have two things to attend to. We need to get some forces quickly here to defend our ships. Uh, that would be Fufius' uh, uh, assignment, that's for sure. Marcus Antonius will probably be the ones who attack the... Uh, the Pompeian fleet, he might get these two with him um, to get a larger force attacking and I think these guys should be enough to defend um, while Marcus Antonius does his job. 
Uh, and the cavalry I will probably use as a, kind of a reserve, being in the center, ready to strike at any direction needed. Um, they can quickly, you know, get behind the lines and prevent some retreat pass and all that. Then we can get some nice um, hammer and anvil attacks, hopefully. Um, that's it, I believe. So let's just start the game. Um, and the Pompeians for the guys to start, I see, think, right? Yes, that's true. So let's check their A and B slots. So we have three in the center. That's good. That's really good because we can order these guys uh, quickly to attack. That's excellent. We have a uh, mounted, which is really bad, but so that will be one of our choice. We have another three center. Good. And a counterattack. Okay. That's what we have. So let's see if we can play any of those cards. I'm pretty happy with the three in the center to start the game, to be honest. Um, yeah, I guess we're going to play that because we can now play... Um, hold on, this is only one unit, so that would be... We can't play the counterattack with the attack this card. This is counted as a tr um, section or troop card in this uh, system. And this would be only one unit of our choice. <laughs> I think I need to play this, which sucks for the Pompeian sides. They would really much have wanted to play a three. Uh, but since I need to do the least amount of activations, I need to play this. Only good thing is I will now get rid of that bad card, but I can only order m one unit of my choice, which do suck. For sure. Um, so then the question is, who should I... Okay, so let's prepare for... I mean, s sooner or later we're going to be able to play these three in the center. So let's get some heavier troops towards the center. Um, I might even... You know what? I'm gonna order... Uh, what is his name again? Uh, Libo. Libo himself. He will go one, two, three. So he will now take charge of the attack towards the town in, in, instead of the defenses over here. That's the start. A really... Um, well, kind of a lost turn. That bothers me a bit. But that's how it is. So let's see what the Caesarians got. Two in the center or Inspirad left leadership. That's good. We could get uh, Pompeius acting right away with that card. Uh, not Pompeius, uh, Antonius. So that's a CDE. So it's actually not none of these cards. So let's see what we have here. We have three in the center. A line command or two center. So let's do three in the center. Because I want to get these guys ready for the advance here and gather up, gather up first. So we have a third one. So let's take one of the cavalry as well. So these guys will go two steps and join Marcus Antonius in, in the camp. These guys will go up the hill. And these guys will also go one, two, three up the hill, ready to strike. And now we have a nice one here and we can play a line command, get them all to the ridge and then we can start the attack. So both sides are doing some organizations first, some leader movement here and these guys uh, um, forming up for the attack against the raiding party. Okay, so we got one of these again. Uh, for the Pompeians. So it's a counterattack that would be three in the center. Or I could play a three in the center. I, I will do that. I'll spare this one for a hopefully better moment. So let's play uh, uh, the car from slot A. So that's three units. And now we start the attack. We, we need to be busy now. So I'm going to do this. Um, these guys will man the ramparts. These guys will just take one step to attack the lights who are now in a bad position. And these guys take two steps to get here. 
So we have one actual battle to do. So we're going to attack out the brand parts. These guys, in a, as I said, in a bad position. They um, cannot evade, they cannot retreat, and they are not supported. But the ramparts gives them some support. Uh, so we're going to ignore one flag and one sword symbol. So four dice, and we have a leader with us. Okay, so one flag we can ignore. There's no hits. Uh, but we got another flag, too bad for these guys, they need to go two hexes, they cannot, so they lose two blocks instead. Like so. But they can battle back with two dice. And they actually rolled a blue, so they managed to hit these guys. And we're gonna check Lebo, who's already in danger, but, uh, well... He survived. Okay, I think that's an interesting start. I think that's a really interesting start. Let's replace the card slot A and go back to the Caesarians. So maybe Fufius needs to get his act together and start advancing. C, D, or E. Lancomod 2 in the ce uh, center or 3 left. Okay. So we have a critical situation coming up here now, so I think I will need to... Too bad we don't have any cards on the right hand side, so we need to take the line command, order these guys. And I think the leader can be in a line command, can't he? Uh, Order a group of food units. The group must be adjacent. Linked hexes, yeah. Okay, so this doesn't say the leader is uh, activated by this card. Huh. Okay, so he will be staying in his camp then. Um, just ordering up his troops. He will join later, I believe. So let's play it like that. Uh, so yeah, that's it. A bit of a slow start from from them as well. Now let's see if they can get those guys. Um, yeah, maybe I should have done some defensive actions in this. Ah, uh, yeah, yeah, I could have done that. Well, let's see, I have done it now. I was just thinking maybe I should have played the two in the center instead and maybe done some counterattack and getting these guys away. But I did this now, so let's let's continue. The Pompeians. Oh, they got this. I think this is the third time in a row they rolled the same result. So that we have counterattack, which is a line command. Which is not too bad. Or we can play the three in the center. I think we go with another three in the center. So these same troops are now activated. And this time, these guys will start burning the ships. So if they are here for their next turn, they will destroy that ship unit there. These guys, they will now go up, and these guys go here. And I will start attacking from here. That's three dice. And leader support. They ignore that, but look at this, two greens. Amazing role. This guy is destroyed. Uh, the Pompeians get the first banner. And we will for sure gain ground. Then we will do attack on the rampart. So these guys don't get the rampart protection now because we are attacking not from the protected side, so to speak. So we're going to have, have four dice and no, no reductions or anything in, in hits. Oops, let's reroll that. Alright, there's no hits, but we got the retreat flag, so 
these guys need to retreat down. Um, do I want to gain ground? Yes, let's do that. Let's do that. Okay, so it's a small force doing a lot of damage over there, uh, while these guys are just waiting, a big force here waiting for Marcus Antonio's attack. Hmm. Interesting. So these guys, they went too, so they cannot throw any javelins. So yeah, they just stay there. So that's it. Uh, we have no card to replace because we played it from the two card slot. So now, Caesarians, you really need to do something now. A, B or C. Two center. Inspire left leadership or three left. Still nothing over here. So the two center. Hmm. We cannot reach that guy. That sucks. From the with the center card. I mean, if we or these guys, they can only march up here, but they cannot attack then. They can, of course, go there and throw javelins, and if they're lucky to get the flag, these guys would need to retreat. That's, of course, something, but mm, that's one one chance of six to success for success, so that's not too, too cool. Um, oh, man. It's really too bad I cannot activate anything over there. But I will wait with Marcus Antonios and I need to do something here. So I'm gonna play two in the center anyway. So these guys, I will I will take my chances to do it. But for the second one. I will take these guys and go here. These guys will go here and I will do that. I will, I will try to do what I can to save one victory banner. So I'm going to roll a one. No, I can't do that because I'm adjacent to an enemy unit. Oh. We need to attack those guys then. And I'm going to do that. Let's roll the three dice try to get some hits on them. I didn't, uh, not a single one, bad roll. So they're gonna battle back with four. They got one hit on us. This is starting really bad for the Caesarians. Um, also, I might need, have need to re react it a bit earlier here, uh, I realize, but uh, well, at least the uh, helping troops are a bit uh, closer, but the problem is I cannot activate anything over there. Remember, if, if I could have just have three over here, I, I would already be at the ramparts, but nope. Okay. So we got back to the Pompeians then. And now, before we play a card, we're gonna remove that and give them a second victory banner. Now some of the ships are destroyed. A, B or C for the Pompeians. Dark in the sky, counter attack, or three units right, which would be over here. A counter attack would be two in the center. Dark in the sky, No, not interested in that. So I'm gonna I'm gonna play three on the right. I'm gonna gather up some more troops to to help out here. Um, let's take these three as reinforcements and this cluster of units 
three legionaries and two auxilia will have to protect this. So I'm going to rush some troops uh, towards that direction. Let's go here and fire. Mm, these guys cannot evade if I go that. Let's take these guys instead. They rush towards this direction as well. Something like that. And these guys will charge fire against cavalry with one die. And of course they hit, they got the flag. That was the optimal result because these guys need to go three back now. One, two, three. Uh, hold on. Uh, where were I here? One, two, three. Let's go. Uh, let's go to the center section and anyway. That was bad. That was bad because I was thinking of raiding here with the cavalry, you know, in the water, but now we can't do that either. Oh, everything goes as planned for Pompeians now. Uh, let's also play the Caesarian turn. Let's see if we can get something good before we end the first session. That's a DRE for the Caesarians. Uh, we know we have two in the center, but over here we have light troops. Um, light troops, we could order these guys with that, but that's all. But let's do that. I, I need to, I mean, these guys will just otherwise march to the next one and destroy me. So I'm, I need to, oh, this is bad. I still cannot order groups over here. And that that's really, really super bad. So these guys need to be on their own. These guys will throw the javelins. These guys. These guys will also throw some javelins. And what should I do with these guys? Do I dare to do another attack? Oh, I might be dead. Uh, or should we try to destroy that one? Maybe I should. Let's march down here. But then these guys don't have any target. So I will go one, two instead. Hold on, let's go here instead. Sorry, I'm gonna redo my whole thing. I go here, that's a more difficult position to be, but I'll do that anyway. So let's start here, one die. That's nothing. Um, let's take these, two dice. That was good, that was an amazing uh, javelin shot by these guys, killing two of these. Uh, really nice. And now, let's see if we can get the final blow. We only get two dice though, because um, yeah, it's it's uh, battling in water, you know. So we got one additional hit, but they're gonna battle back with two. They also got the hit, so they were exchanging it out here. Um, yeah, something like that. Okay, let's replace the card in the slot D. And that's it um, for this session, I believe. So we have this uh, Pompeians in lead 2 to 0. One of the uh, victory banners is from a destroyed unit, the other one is from burnt chips. Uh, well, a critical situation for the Caesarians. Maybe I kind of helped the Pompeians here a bit in the beginning. I should have reacted more here. As I, have a, I had a two in the center uh, slot card, but I, I wanted to get the these guys forward instead. And well, that's how it ended. But um, 
well, they might. I mean, these guys might get here before we have more troops destroying uh, the Caesarian and fleets. And this uh, raider here is uh, soon to be dead, I believe. Um, yeah, he cannot do much. But we have more troops. They have sending. They are sending uh, reinforcements here towards this uh, area. And we also wanted to start putting some pressure here, but if they do that, we lose a turn over there. So it's oh, tough choices to do in this uh, scenario for the Caesarian side at this point, that's for sure. Anyway, let's see how it goes uh, next time. Um, I'm enjoying this game, I, I must say. Uh, it gets your brain working, that's for sure, especially if you play both sides. Um, yeah, so thanks for watching and um, Hopefully you will be back for part two to see how maybe this ends in part two. I have a sense it might, um, but we'll see. Okay, see you next time. Bye for now.